So in part A of this question, we have to find the ship's displacement vector. And what that question really is asking us to do is to find the x component of what we call the resultant vector, and then also the y component of that same resultant vector. And you can see in our little table that that would represent these two unknowns right here. In the table, we have the vectors a and b, which are the two given vectors in the question listed along the side. And then what we're going to do is take those vectors and break them up into their x and their y components. Let's talk about how to find the x component of a vector. So for example, if we wanted to find the x component of vector a, what we would do is take the magnitude of vector a, which we will explain in a moment, and multiply that by the cosine of an angle. Now, it is very important when working with vectors that when you find these components that this angle right here is measured relative to the positive x-axis. And we're going to show you in the picture what we mean by that. But this is incredibly important that the angle is measured relative to the positive x-axis. If you look at the picture, which is based on the description, you can see that vector a has an angle associated with it of 45 degrees. However, that angle right there is not the angle that is measured relative to this positive x axis right here. So in fact, the angle that we need to find the x component is not the 45 degree angle that is given in the question, but rather it is the angle measured again relative to the positive x axis. So that angle would be right here. That's the angle that we need to use to plug in to get the component. Now, of course, we all know from geometry that a straight line, which is this x-axis right here, is a 180 degree angle. So if this part of the straight line is 45 degrees, then we're going to have to subtract the 45 from the 180 to get this angle right here. So in other words, the angle for vector A is going to be 180 minus 45. And of course, 180 minus 45 is 135 degrees. So for the x component of vector A, we can take its magnitude, which is 50 kilometers, and multiply that by the cosine of the 135 degree angle. For the y component, of vector a or any other vector, you take the same magnitude of 50, but then you multiply it by the sine of that same angle, 135. So we have appropriately filled those in. You might want to pick up your calculator and do 50 cosine of 135, and you'll get negative 35.4. And then for 50 sine of 135, you're going to get positive 35.4. Now the fact that the x component is negative and the y component is positive should make some sense because if you look back at the original diagram, the x component of vector a is pointing to the left and that's why it's negative and the y component is pointing straight up and that's why it's positive. So it kind of works out neatly like that. We can move to vector b and again, we want to measure our angle relative to the positive x-axis. Now for vector b, the positive x-axis is right here. And you can see that the 30 degree angle given in the question is indeed measured relative to that positive x-axis. So we're okay with the 30 degree angle there because it's measured relative to the positive x-axis. So we take the magnitude of vector b, which is 70, and multiply it by the cosine of that 30 degree angle. And then for the y component, we take the magnitude and multiply it by the sine of the 30 degree angle. Once again, pick up your calculator, make sure it is set to degree mode. 70 times the cosine of 30 is about 60.6. And then 70 times the sine of 30 is exactly 35. And in that case, both the x and the y components are positive. Check back at the diagram to make sure that that makes sense, that they should both be positive. Now what you do to get the resultant x and the resultant y is very simple. You just add the x components together to get the resultant x, and then you add the y components to get the resultant y. So for the x, we take the negative 35.4 and we add 60.6, and we get about 25.2. So this means that r sub x is 25.2 kilometers. And then for the r sub y, you take 35.4 and add the 35, and you get 70.4. So the r sub y is 70.4 kilometers. And that completes part A of the question. In part B, we are asked to find the displacement vectors, magnitude, and direction. So that's what we're going to do next. And to do that, what you'll do 
is draw a new set of axes. So your y and x axis. And then you look back at your rx, and your rx was positive 25.2. So start at the origin, and because it's positive, project that vector along the positive x axis, and then just label it as 25.2 kilometers. Now for the y component, we also have a positive value, it's 70.4. But don't start at the origin for that. Start at the tip of the x component and go upward because it is positive and it's 70.4 kilometers. Now, of course, the overall resultant magnitude is this vector right here. It basically is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And because it is the hypotenuse of a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, which tells us that r squared is equal to one leg of our triangle squared plus the other leg of our right triangle squared. Pick up your calculator, evaluate the right-hand side. You're going to get a 5591.2. But then you have to take the square root on both sides in order to solve for r. And we can get an answer of about 74.8. So the resultant has a magnitude of 74.8 kilometers. So that's one of the answers for part b. But part b also wanted the direction. So the direction will be indicated by this angle right here and that is measured relative to this positive x-axis. We can see from some trigonometry knowledge that the tangent of that angle is equal to the opposite side, which is the 70.4 kilometers, divided by the adjacent side, which is the 25.2. You can pick up your calculator and divide 70.4 by 25.2. You're gonna get about 2.79, but that's not your angle. We have one more step to get that angle. And to get that angle, we need to cancel the tangent out on the left side. So to cancel the tangent, you do the inverse tangent. And you must make sure you do it on both sides. So that cancels out the tangent on the left side, leaving us with just theta. On your calculator, you do the inverse tangent of that 2.79. You're going to get about 70.3 degrees. And sometimes, they want you to express that angle in a very precise manner. So you can't just really say 70.3 degrees. You actually need to specify. And if we look at our picture, we can see that that angle, or rather the vector, the vector r, is pointing in a sort of northeast direction. So one way of expressing the angle is 70.3 degrees north of east. And that would be a common way of expressing the final direction of that vector.